What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Andy the Middle-Aged Gamer and this is the brand new 2024 DCG Customs GHK TTI Glock 34 Aluminum Slide Edition Review. Now, as always, let's get the usual disclosures on screen now and let's jump right in. So, let's start with who are DCG Customs? Well, they're a small custom manufacturer and retailer based out of Taiwan. Not that far away from the factory that makes our lovely VFCs, GHK stuff, etc. So, it was a right fitting choice for them to choose GHK as the base platform we see here. And that is basically led with their custom skills to making what was pretty much a bad pistol from GHK to a absolutely outstanding piece of kit. So, how did they do it? What did they do? Let's do what we always do. Let's jump straight in and take a look. Let's start with the magazine. So, here we have our magazine. It is GHK proprietary, meaning it will not fit in any other gas blowback, um, I would say Glock 17, Glock 34, or any of the full-size, I would say, Glocks. And that is in part due to the different location of the gas seal here that goes onto your nozzle. And like I say, some other little bits and pieces that are different. Now, as you can see, we do get all the correct markings down the rear. And we do have this full aluminum, how to say, CNC'd base plate that's held onto this by the tracks here, but also by this rear pin, which is secured in place by a little grub screw. You are going to need to undo that, push the pin in, slide this off in order to fill it with gas. But in doing that, it gives you the ultimate realism. There is no BB follower here, which means you will be top loading this. These are very hard plastic feed lips, and it is quite difficult to load the 20 rounds maximum capacity that you can fit into here, which is actually quite correct for what you would see here with the extended base plate and that. So again, they've gone for ultra realism and it's good for movie making, not having that BB follower there or any gas fill valve at the bottom or what have you. Now you do get a nice wider knocker valve right here at the back and we can compare that if I pull out a VFC one, which is Umarex's other officially licensed, you can see how they have done theirs. With the VFC, you have this big wide open channel, you can easily speed load things into it. It's quite simple but as you can see here there are some dimensional changes it is quite huge right so in le in height they are the same and you do have the correct markings on both they are all quite nice but you do have a bigger knocker valve on the GHK than you do on the VFC and whereas with the VFC it's quite simple to fill because it is just a pull down here and slide job and you will expose your fill valve right there slide it back it's done like I say with this you are going to need to undo the screw here push that pin in slide it off fill it reassemble now one thing I will tell you you will notice with these is they are very light when comparing it to the die cast version that comes with the VFC this aluminium version if we move this out of the way I have my scales here we can take a good look so take the protector cover off let's turn on my scales hello and we'll just make sure it is zeroed right so the VFC comes in at 261.07 grams okay now remember this has the extended heavy aluminum base plate on it so let's see what that one comes in at even with the extended, it comes in a lot less, which is actually quite good. I mean, if you take this off and you just put the original uh, stock base plate for it onto it from the Glock 17 Gen 3, it'll be even lighter because this does count for almost as heavy a weight as this actual, uh, how would you say, full magazine. It's ridiculous. And of course, if you do buy these magazines from GHK and you want to buy them separate, you will need to buy the mag and the base plate is separate and it will come in at an extremely high price. We'll get to that at the end, but uh, yeah, we're not talking a small price. Now, let's move it 
back to the gun at hand. So, if I can actually take the stand out of the way now. So here we are with the Glock 34. Now, you do get the brand new Terran Tactical flared magwell here for the bottom for fast reloads. Remember, this is designed as a race pistol, as used by Terran Butler and designed by him and his team. It is an absolute beautiful, I would say, piece of solid aluminium that is screwed in at the rear. Just fits really nice. And of course, everything on this gun has been hand fitted and, and done by DCG Customs. They are absolutely awesome, including this hand stippling job. Now, the good thing about it being by hand is it's not so aggressive. It's not like a machine that leaves all the sharp ridges that really do hurt your hand. This just feels grippy. It feels really good. You have the texturing up here for your finger shelf, right here on both sides. It's completely mirrored. You have a nice little indent still. It keeps everything that the GHK frame has, which is as rigid as you can ever get. And they give you the same marking. So you've still got the official Glock. This is an officially licensed product by Umrex when it comes to the Glock side of things. So that's cool. Now they did scallop out your, I would say, mag release button here to give you an easy access. It's not such a very slightly, I would say, exposed button. It's now easily able to just smack it and drop that mag fast. Now, of course, if we take the light off, you do have your rail up here with a single piece and you do get your unique serial number. As you can see, you can just barely see the seam line through the molding process. To be honest, that's on the real one, and that's just the way that they were made. So you have to get over yourself on that one. But yes, we'll show you the markings on the other side as we get round. You do have your takedown tabs here. You've got your trigger pin and your little pin here for your slide stop. So it's a really, really good thing. And of course, we're going to move on now from the magwell and that and the grip to the trigger. One of the problems with the GHK Glock 17 was that it came with something like a silly 12 to 13 pound pull trigger. It was ridiculous. You couldn't really use it. And that's why they didn't sell very well as it's standard. But DCG Customs have made it so you can click very easily. Nice tactile reset. So let's see that again. We'll reset it properly. So you have your usual take up. There's the wall. You can feel it. You pull it one, two, three, and a break. There you go. Break. And you got one, two, three to reset. So it's quite a decent, I would say, job. And you can let go to go all the way. Now, what they did was polish and deburr all the parts in there, made it a lot more better. So the trigger pull is nice, it's crisp, it's clean and smooth. It's not like the stock GHK Glock by any means. The trigger looks the same, but all the insides have been nicely polished to give us that better trigger, which we deserve. Now, moving from the frame, let's go up. So as you can see, we do have the EMG licensed TTI Glock 34 slide kit which has been made with a full CNC'd slide. It's very rigid, very thick, very powerful in that respect. And you do get your very deep serrations at the front and at the rear. So it's really, really good quality slide. You can see the brush markings there from the CNC machine that's been left to give it that metal look. You see the two different types of anodizing. You've got the more matte and the shiny gloss, which is nice. And of course, this being the, um, how would say, MOE version of it, you do get the RMR plate here, which they do provide you with not one, two, three, four foot plate differences to allow you to accommodate basically every foot plate that they've ever released that's important and that's been successful. Now, that's kind of cool. They do provide you with a set of keys. You have the thicker one here, which is your Torx key. That fits into these Torx screws here. If we can get this thing to focus. Okay, once you take that top plate off, you will need to remove your rear sight in this case, um, which you will need the Allen key in here. That will help you take off the rear sight, and you'll also get the four screws, which you can see in here they secure the actual plate to the frame 
Okay, so you'll have four screws, one in each corner, and then you can have the rear sight Jose RMR on there. Now, of course, if you have a standard real steel rear sight, a normal Glock sight on there, you could probably get away with using the suppressor height sights. That will allow you to co-witness if you wish to. But to be honest with you, I'm going to follow John Wick's example on this one and go without the RMR. And that's why you have your TTI rear sight and fiber front sight. You do get your engraving there for the Terran Tactical on top of the slide. Your lightning cuts here. This cut is on the, the real Glock 34 anyway, the standard, but obviously it's quite nice. Now, some of you will have already noticed there's a little shiny bit with this front fiber. That is not due to DCG Customs or the shipping company, UPS, which I used in this case. That is due to Her Majesty's Customs and Excise here in the UK, or HMRC, as we saw in the unboxing, they didn't even put it back in its proper packaging for security when it was shipped back onto me. They'd opened it, played with it, and broke the front sight. There was a very, I don't know if I can get that in, but there's a very, very thin crack going all the way down. It's on both sides. And so a bit of E6000 glue would be fine. Now, I'm not so worried with these GHK Glocks because this uses real steel sights. They are not fake. They are not crappy they're proper real steel and in doing so means that I can fit any front and rear sight from a real steel one anyway so I'm not bothered about that if I want to swap the sights out I can do I just put a bit of E6000 just for now see how it goes of course you know you might want to do whatever I am expecting according to WGC they have asked GHK for a and DCG customs for a new front sight and they're going to ship it to me as soon as well as you can tell, they've not done it yet. Now, let's flip this around and we can have a look at what's on the top. So we can show the top markings, 9x19, and your barrel proof markings and that, which are quite nice. And you do have your serial number for your barrel right there. You do get your TTI logo here, where it's not on that side. And this side says Combat Master, whereas that side says, obviously has the full name. And I don't know if I can get that front sight thing in there. You can just see where the crack was. Now... Of course, you do get your lovely gold anodized barrel. It's a light anodizing, hence the marks that you can see, the wearing marks. That's just indicative of all weapons, even the real steel one gets them. The outer coating on this is a harder anodizing, and that's why after 2,000 rounds, this thing is still looking really good on the outside. Now, you do get your markings here, say so Made in Austria, Glock which is correct, and I like that. It doesn't say licensed by, like other Glocks. They've really gone all out to make this the most realistic shooting Glock on the market. Now, I think with that being said, now we've had a good look at that, I do think, let's get that right. I think this is time to lock and load and take it out to the range. Okay, I'm running green gas and 0.25 gram BBs. Okay, five through. That gives us an average of 293.8, which is amazing for 0.25s. High of 299.3, low of 286.2, which is awesome. Okay, let's take it back to 10 meters and let's see how good she is. That one was finding my aim. This is your actual grouping, no excuses. It's not bad. Okay, let's take you back to 10 meters and let's see how she goes.
outstanding. Okay, so as you can see here, accuracy wise, I've got no issue with it. It's shooting quite nice. It started to, I would say, bed in now with its hop. It's gotten to a settle down point. This one, like I say, was me. I always shoot to the bottom right just to find out where my point of aim is on here. And these are your general grouping size. And you are looking around about the two and a half to three inches at its maximum, which is not bad for a pistol at 10 meters. You know, it's not the best, but of course you can always swap out the inner barrel and booking and put whatever you want on it. Okay. And that will obviously increase the accuracy and the group or decrease the group size as well. So accuracy, great, no problem. As for gas efficiency, you're gonna look at two full mags of BBs with one charge of gas, um, probably a bit more in the summer or a bit less in the really cold winters. That's just the way it goes. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's fine. Now, let's have a look at this insides and let's see how this thing ticks. So, because they use the GHK frame, like I said, this is absolutely rigid. There's no bend or flex. You can already see that the rail systems here are molded in to the actual plastic. So rather than this being like a, I would say, the VFC, such as here, where you've got all the screws holding everything in, this one is all molded in, meaning that this thing is going to be as tough and durable and not come loose. One of the issues I absolute hate about VFC and their, I would say, Marui style of hammer internal hammer fired glocks is the fact that at the back there is a pin or a screw to be exact i will show you on this vfc one right here now i purchased the red wolf agency arms uh what is it uh, exa pistol their uh, high-end one from a few years back cost me 200 pounds at the time and 60 odd pounds a mag and after 50 rounds the cheap absolute cheap ass frame that they used they didn't use vfcs they used a cheap really really bad i would say copy of a timberwolf frame which they marketed as licensed and all this stuff but after 50 rounds that screw where it screws into the plastic frame that plastic part had completely disintegrated and so this whole unit for the hammer unit would lift up jam and just basically screw the gun up and that meant the only way I could actually get it to run would be to swap out the frame for another one and they don't sell the frame on its own. And so you'd have to just go with a standard Glock 17 frame, Gen 3 at the time, because um, Red Wolf used the Gen 3 from VSC internals, which were on Gen 5 like this. So you can imagine it's just a, it's garbage. Don't waste your money on that pistol. Um, but yeah, VSC themselves do a harder and better I would say polymer, and so where that screws in, it's a way better, and it is a lot more durable. I mean, we all know the Glock 45, she's had over 6,000 rounds through it, and it runs and looks perfect. So they did a good job with this one. Now, one of the differences between this and the GHK is the fact that they got rid of that hammer. So if I show you here, we can pull the trigger, boom, there goes that silly hammer that has a 130 to 140% spring on it, and it's a really, really really so you have to hit the reset there tough point and then you can click in that sear there to re how to say disengage the firing pin so a lot of levers a lot of complicated clockwork to get it to run and to be honest with you anyone who owns one will tell you it can be an absolute nightmare right guys it's just the way it was but we accept it because it's the only way we could get our striker fire pistols but then we found with the Canic TP9 from Armory, oh, Armor Works, uh, licensed by Cybergun and that, that one showed you that you could do a firing pin mechanism that's better. And then, of course, GHK brought to the field theirs. So if we take the GHK one back out, you can see there's no hammer there. There is a spring, but as you can see, I pull on my trigger and that's it. That's all she wrote. You instantly push down on the firing pin there, which goes out. That fires it as the slide goes back. It tricks it, and that's it. Now, unlike a Glock like this, which would you would always keep your... You can see all the springs inside are under tension, so you would drop the hammer. That would mean that all springs are out of tension, and therefore be fine. With this one, if you put them 
when you pull the trigger, the springs are now in tension. It's the reverse. Okay. So you want to do it that way. Now, I don't know about you, but yeah, I find that's a lot better of a system and it is a lot more durable. Now, of course, some people are going to complain that this doesn't have the extended or enhanced, as they call it, uh, slide release. You can pop onto Samoon if you want and buy one. It's entirely up to you. But to be honest, I've had no problem with this one. They are great. And everything in here is just absolute awesome. You know, I can pull up my, uh, how would you say, magnet here. Steel guide rails, steel springs, steel bolt release, steel trigger bar, steel for your other part there, steel, you know. They've gone to hell and back. And as you can just see in there, your magazine release has a steel plate on the top of it and a steel spring that returns it back to, I would say, a detent spring there. Okay. But everything in here is steel, and that means it's going to last you a long time. With it being molded in, it's not going to wear, it's not going to bend or flex or move over time. Okay? That is just absolutely awesome, and I really do appreciate the way that they've done their system. Now, let's move on. Okay, so let's talk outer barrel. Okay, no, actually, we'll do the guide rod. So, difference in guide rods. Here's your Glock 34 guide rod. It is a captive one. It does use your steel spring and your steel end caps and that. Your guide rod is nice full metal and works. Your outer barrel, although mine is dirty, as you can see, I can move that like that. Lovely, dirty, greasy oil. Is a CNC'd, very lightweight. How light, we hear you say. So let's move these out the way. Let's get this out of the way. Let's bring in the scales again. Let's have a look at parts because I know these are important to you guys. So let's zero it. So your outer barrel is 25.69 grams. Very, very light. That's great because it adds to cycling of this. Now, of course, when you look at the VFC one, you get the dual spring there, which, you know, is really good and allows for a snappy response. But as you can see, to take this out, you are going to have to take the hop off and then you can take this out and then slide and disassemble everything. It's not worth my time. We'll show you a complete slide weight thing in a moment. Now, unlike the guide hop that you saw there on the VSC, which uses this rotary wheel here connected to your guide hop, you turn it and it works that way. Unlike that, this one has a new hop system for a GHK. Now, of course, they're just releasing uh, very, very soon. It's coming absolutely soon to be exact. But um, as you can see, they have a hop system wheel here. That little wheel, you turn it. So turn it that way to remove hop. Turn it that way to add hop. And basically, it's quite simple. Let's see if we can get you through. But you can see with very little hop on it, it's already hopping quite good. But this whole unit is very much like a, an AEG type rotary hop there. And you get your standard GHK VSC style. Well, I think it's VSC. It's GHK style barrel. Just leave it at that. But yes, it's a decent system. And it does its job pretty well. Again, you can get your extra parts from Samoon.com. They do a lot of good stuff. And you can import them at a decent rate. So just FYI. It's part of your book in there. But yes, it's a really good hop and system. And it just fits snugly in here for ease of, well, for ease of basically disassembly because you are going to need to disassemble this thing quite a fair few times till you get your hop set, but once your hop set, you're never gonna need to worry about it. Now, let's move on to the slide herself. Now, this is where they, like I say, really went over above and beyond. As you can see, you got your full CNC. There is no cracks, there is no wear. You've just got nice oil. And you have your new nozzle. Now, the nozzle in this is more akin to a rifle nozzle and kind of cycles that way than it is anything else. Now you see this little hole here, that's what secures your mock extractor in. Take that screw out, take your extractor, that allows you to then basically push down and undo everything and disassemble this if you wish to remove your piston. 
like I say, sight here at the rear is one grub screw here. The front, on the other hand, I don't know if I can get that in. Let's see if we can get some light in there. Come on, there you go, is a main Torx nut right there. So, yes. You would put that in, hold your hand there, and just spin this one on, just like the real steel. So, yeah, it's really good in their actual design. The, the whole CNC part of this is just great. It's really strong, it's really rigid, it's just very high quality. Assembly of this is just really easy. It doesn't take much to do. Just pop your barrel and inner barrel in, push it to the rear. You have one little hole on that side, so you always know which way is going where. That just sits on there, and your slide is assembled. Then just slide it onto the rails. There you go. You can see them pop immediately back up. And away we go. Now, complete this whole gun without mag comes in at 401 exactly wow that's good no well, yeah 401 grams not bad how about the uh, VFC let's compare that to the compact VFC shall we so the compact VFC with its slide comes in at 363.95 so it's a little bit heavier but you've got to remember there is a difference between in sizes quite a bit so it's not that bad it's on there it's got some nice weight to it it's, it's lightweight enough that you can do your John Wick things and yeah it's just really really good now let's talk magazine as you can see there is your fill valve I've taken the base plate off you have a secure a secure screw right there so you, if you want to take the, the follower out etc you can do it's not hard just unscrew that and pop that out and like I say that is for that now that's not bad to reassemble it all it's quite simple you would just push in slide on and away you go of course just make sure that that pin is in and like I say then you would push the pin up to keep it on there and away you go and of course it does work like I say so you can put that in lock it to the rear that. Let's try and hold it down. Get my finger. Yep. Uh, there we go. Very snappy. Very powerful. And a huge kick. So, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. You know. So, let's go over final thoughts. Okay, if you've gotten this far in the video and you like what you're seeing, but you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. While you're there, hit that notification bell and like button. That way you stay notified whenever I upload and you really help out with the algorithm by liking the video. Of course, if you want to go one step further, you can always use the YouTube thanks button and donate to the channel yourselves if that's what you wish to do. A huge thank you if you do. And if you don't, still a huge thank you. You guys are all important to me and it's because of you I get to do this. So, with that being said, let's talk final thoughts. Now... The magazines on here are bloody expensive. That's the one thing that really pushes this back. Not only is the gun coming in at around 400 quid here in the UK, by the time you paid all your customs fees and so on, this thing is ridiculously expensive for the magazines. For instance, here's a spare one that I bought, thanks to Defcon Airsoft, who gave me £10 discount. So I paid 60 instead of 69.99 for the mag, which came with its original base plate fitted. I bought the extender base plate to match with the other one because obviously you're gonna to want to match it. And this alone with shipping cost me 40 pounds. Now, of course you're gonna save a bit if you buy a few of them, but you've gotta be able to find a few GHK mags in the first place. Being realistic, this thing is really hard because it is GHK and we all know the problems with GHK. They make one or two batches of parts and accessories a year, if you're lucky, and they all get snapped up in Asia. And when they come here to the UK, what would cost me 26 pounds a magazine in Asia, here, for some reason, costs me 69 pounds 99p. Crazy, yes. Ridiculous, yes. 
And of course, then I've got the base plate on top, which I have to source myself. It's expensive. It's not a cheap, uh, I would say, product. And that's something that GHK has always been. It's expensive. Now, again, depending on which GHK you go for, it could be a cheap, nasty mess, looking at UAK Gen 3, and even the Gen 2s and all that. They never sorted that out, no matter how much they try. And then you've got other things that they've done, which seems to always have an issue or one issue or another. But, you know, they did post a, a, a statement at the beginning of the year that they were going to cease production of everything. All QA checks are going to now be readdressed and production quality is going to be done. Whether they did or not, I don't know. I know that this was done by DCG Customs and they did an absolute outstanding job. They improved the out-of-the-box trigger, made it a lot better. They've given you the hand stippling job. They fitted a custom slide which is really amazing. And they basically made the most realistic, actual, um, how would you say, decent replica of John Wick's TTI Glock 34. Now, like I say, there are others out there that are a lot cheaper. I remember there was one comment on the unboxing video for this, uh, people saying about the RMR without actually watching the video. And there is no plastic in those RMR plates which they accused it of being. This is not the APS one that's basically a cheap, I would say, Marui clone, not as good as Marui. Um, it's not APS, it's not the VFC GMP version, which used, again, that was on the Gen 4, I believe, internals. So it's not that. This is a proper one-to-one, -one, as much as they can get, uh, I would say, replica of the proper TTI G34. So... Yeah, the operate system, phenomenal. Like I say, not having an internal hammer means that just, you can see there, there's nothing holding anything back. It's just awesome. You know, this thing is just absolutely beautiful. It cycles better. That hammerless design really does add to the gas efficiency of the gun, meaning it doesn't, how would you say, waste gas overcoming a hammer strength which many people lighten that hammer spring just enough so that it still makes content, or contact, you'll say, with the firing pin. But, yeah, you, you start messing about with things that's wrong with this. You don't have to. You just buy the gun, put some gas and BBs in, set your hot, and go play. That's all you have to do, which is amazing, and that is what's good about this. And with it having an RMR, you can put that on there and enjoy whatever footprint of RMR you want, real or airsoft, they, you've got a plate that will cover you. The only thing you will need to buy are these screws. These are 9.9 millimeter length screws if you're using the number two plate, um, which is for your Trigicon, RMR, R, uh, uh, RMO, or, or yeah, it's SRO, should I say. Um, optics, they fit on plate number two. And so you'll need a 9.9 millimeter length screw. It has the thread direct, oh, dimensions on the website. You can pick them up anywhere. I do uh, suggest you look at Action Airsoft for that. Um, they have a really detailed description of what to do. Um, you can also get those screws for two pounds UK from Samoon. They do sell them separately. If you don't have them with your optic or if your optics are a bit too long, you can always buy those. Um, so yeah, it's a really good system. I always wanted a Glock 34 from John Wick 2, but everyone out there have been using that internal hammer design, and I'm not a fan of that. I like the hammerless designs. We live in the 2024s now, so there's no excuse to keep up with the technology that's been on the market for eight, nine years, something like that from Marui. It's time to move on, you know, and get something better. So, I would love, honestly, to know how you feel about all this and what you think down in the comments down below. I really like it. It is a pricey gun. It's certainly one of the most expensive I've had to pay for for a pistol. And, you know, I did get the quality. I was lucky enough to get the good quality and everything out there. Um, but, yeah, I'd love to know what you think. Will you be getting this or would you go for the cheaper models, the internal hammer fired designs? It's entirely up to you. I'd love to know in the comments down below. As always, I've been the Middle Age Gamer. You guys have been amazing as always. And I'll see you in the next one.